Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the questions that were asked in NITO company. So let us thank our subscriber who has shared us this question so that it can be of help to others who are watching. If you are someone who is attending interviews, please do share your experience and your questions so that it can help others, other viewers who are watching. So let us get started without wasting much time. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. So the first two questions are pretty uh, similar or rather I would say first question is very standard. Tell me about yourself. Okay. So I would say, you know, please focus on this question, guys. You know, it is very, very important for you to, you know, explain about yourself in a very effective manner so that client will know, you know, how efficient you are in terms of your knowledge with uh, tableau and with your responsibilities th that you have and all so if you need any help on this you can write an email to me we will connect and we can discuss on this so it is very important second is introduction to your project or introduction about your project now i have seen you know these two as one major problem area where you know many of our subscribers are struggling I'm talking about who have, you know, uh, this thing. Uh, so what all we need to include, you know, and all. So see here, see, first of all, whenever you are trying to create a project or you're working on a project, try to get these answers from your uh, team lead or your client and all. Like say, why are you building dashboards? What is the problem statement what is the solution we are providing so if you are trying to find you know this kind of information on your project you know the work that will you will do will motivate you and all and also you should know how are clients going to use your dashboard how is it going to help them? So these are some preliminary questions that you should either ask yourself if you are working from, from a long time or you should get answers to this. So once you get this, you know, it will be a cakewalk for you to design dashboards, implement, you know, scenarios and all. Okay. So while doing so, you will also learn the architecture. Now, what is the architecture of my, you know, project like say when i say architecture you know how are you getting the data what are the teams involved you know what is the you know, etl mapped and all so what is your actual data source so technically what happens is you know uh, the end tables from etl team that they are loading in will be your source for your tableau right so we don't want that so if i you know try to take uh, an example here this is very important for you to understand like say you know these are my different tables that i have here okay so now when i try to when any team it might be an etl team or a db team or someone they try to bring the data from different data sources or it can be different tables and all so after you know the extraction they transform it according to your business knowledge and all or business needs and all by applying business logic and then finally they will load that into one you know common table after processing everything so this table will be your source this table okay so this table you need to use or we will be using it for our tableau purpose so all as a Tableau developer, this is what you will be using to create your dashboards. Fine, that is fine. But it is important that you know how are you getting the data till here. So you should be able to explain this procedure, okay, this thing. So this is your architectural diagram, okay? So try to get that information whenever you are working in a project. It will definitely help you in giving a better uh, explanation to your project. Okay, so next is what is cascading filter? Again, you know, cascading and context filter go hand in hand. Okay, so many confused between these two. 
okay suppose uh, if i go to our tableau here and if i so generally when you have multiple filters in place like say i have my category and sub category and i'm taking sales and i have two items to display here show filter show filter okay now whenever i'm selecting category item like say i'm only selecting furniture so it is showing me only relevant values of my furniture category right when i select office supplies it will show me only relevant sub category items of my office supplies so same like it is happening in the view as well okay so if i just say only all values in database so even my view is automatically you know being filtered to only subcategories of category item selected but my drop down here is not getting filtered so this you have to take care whenever you have multiple filters in place so this can be done using selecting only relevant values okay so that is how you can achieve and this is the behavior of cascading filter okay so cascading filter is mostly for your drop downs to show only relevant values based on what you are selecting from one filter or the other okay so that's your cascading filter similarly context filter is something when you want two filters to work together okay like say i'm taking uh, for now i'll take a sub category here and i'm taking i think i have shown this example multiple times but still so if i select top three sub category items we will get chairs phones and storage right but if i try to add category here you see this three might be different like say i'm just taking a sub category onto my filter shelf okay now you see here these are different one is coming from okay i'm repeated sub category go to top by field top three we got these three right now when i try to add my category here what is happening one is coming from furniture one is coming from office supplies and one is coming from technology but assume i have a filter on category okay apply okay now if i try to show filter here so when i select furniture here i will get only one item because only top 3 we have selected from sub category but we should get top 3 items in each category that we are going to select okay so as of now these filters are independent so they don't know what each other is doing so it will give us top 3 it will filter on that now if when i say when i make it add to context now when i select only one okay sorry maybe not this so when you select a category and add it to context you are forcing this filter to be dependent and you are telling tableau that ki boss execute this filter first so that is why when you execute this what will happen only technology items will be passed on to my sub category values okay and from that we will we are going to get top 3 items so that is how the behavior of context filter will work okay so you can talk about that in this context filter and cascading filter again what is lod and types of lods we all know by now okay we have fixed lod include lod exclude and uh, table scoped okay so how to apply again row level security so row level security can be applied in multiple ways using uh, you know user functions that we have here okay so if i go here and uh, if i select user you will see you know is member of username and all using that you can apply or you can also create you know server under server you have an option called as create user filter select the region or field on which you want to apply filter for that we need to connect and once you set connect you can select the users and apply the filter or you can also use a db method to do that okay so these are some things that you need to be aware of when you are applying row level security 
now show region wise sales in percentage filter by region but percentage should not change okay so this was one question that was asked many times okay it's a small trick that we all need to remember like say i'm taking sales and i'm dropping it okay so this is a simple you know sales but if i try to make it percentage of total we are getting percentage right so for each region now the expectation is this percentage should not change whenever i am selecting other filter values so like say i am just selecting show filter now see here if i select central central is becoming 100 but if i select east it is becoming 50 which means whatever the data is available based on that it is trying to capture and give us the percentage values that is not the expectation this should remain same 21 29 30 irrespective of whether i select anything from my drop down or not how can we do that simple so you need to think from the data perspective here what is happening when i select a region field only that particular data is coming into the filter right but to calculate the percentage what do we need we need total value that should not change so total values without change means what we can use LOD expression. So that concept that you should understand. Okay, I can simply write sum of sales divided by, so I'm just writing so sum of sales. Okay, and uh, again I'm just adding Now, when I try to bring this in my view, it should fix my issue. Okay. Now, uh, let us just convert this into percentage format. Okay. Now, see here, we have 21, 29, 16, 17, 31, sorry. Now, if I select South, it should remain same. See, my region is getting calculated correctly. So this way you can solve this problem. Very you know, effective method. Uh, but just remember this is solution. Okay, so that's uh, it from this question. Now again, what is live versus extract when to choose? Live is a real-time connection to your database where values will keep changing based on uh, the frequency and all like say if any data is getting updated that should get reflected on your dashboard which means whatever the data that you are showing on the dashboard is near real time whereas extract is uh, technically uh, a copy of data taken at a particular time okay so based on the expectation from the client based on the volume of the data we can choose whether we want to go with the live connection or an extract connection so do prefer like extract connection whenever you have you know, the volume is very high and the client is okay with the delayed data. Like say for banking transactions, we do need delayed data, right? To get complete transactions. So in that scenario, we can choose one volume of data. Frequency of your uh, data refresh of source you can also define uh, decide on that and uh, uh, expectation from the client and nature of data so you can you know check on all of these type of uh, questions on your data and then you can decide how you want to go or how you want to proceed so how to get not matching records from table in Tableau? So when I was thinking of this question, I could uh, get only this, but do comment if you have an alternate approach other than this. Let us see if someone has. So when I try to pull this second table into my view, and if I select this, Okay, here we have region is equal to region and here we have equal to. 
so what i am assuming is when i'm selecting equal to region is equal to region which means matching record right so i don't want matching so if i select this so will it give me non matching records is my question do let me know in comment section if you feel the same i think that should solve our problem of getting non matching records i can select full join to get the entire data so and non matching records so that way i will be able to get non matching records but you can comment down your approach let me see okay so and apart from this there were many sql questions that were asked so for now i do not have any sql questions but i'll definitely post whenever i get and that's it from my side in this video i hope you have learned something new if it does don't forget to like share and subscribe and you know do comment your comments and see you in the next video till then bye bye and have a good day